Hey guys, I just tried to do a live stream with Phil. Unfortunately, I didn't hook, click the right buttons or do the right training. I tried to do it on YouTube and then they made me do a 24 hour delay, which I wasn't aware of. Um, so next week, hopefully it'll be on YouTube. Uh, I tried on Rumble, couldn't get the right codes in the right boxes. Um, I need some training in this, but it'll work next week, hopefully with God's help. And uh, anyway, I got Phil on the line here because uh, we're already here. So I figured we'd talk about some stuff and then put it on and see uh, and see if we could do this live next week. So anyway, Phil had the idea of uh, talking about why uh, why the endgame is not going to be drawn out from here. It's been drawn out since like 1933 or 1971 or 2008. There's a lot of drawn outs, uh, but we don't think it's going to be drawn out from here. And the only thing that I can really say when people ask me that question is I look at the curve of the money supply. But then, you know, you zoom out and it looks like the same curve no matter how far you go. So, I mean, what is the definitive answer to this, if there is even a definitive answer? And before you answer, um, Phil and I, um, I kind of, uh, the way he describes it is I occupy the distilled ether of the monetary sphere. And Phil occupies a floor just a little closer to ground level than I do. So I, I usually take uh, the high concepts and then apply everything to that, whereas he can go a little bit further down to earth. So from your perspective, Phil, why aren't we in a, in a, in a, in a time when, you know, the degradation of society can last decades more, maybe even centuries more like it did in the Roman empire. Why aren't we doomed to that disgusting horribleness? I, well, I don't, I don't know for sure what my, my thought behind it is that for, if you look at a country like North Korea, like North Korea should have imploded, you know, decades ago, but it keeps getting funded by outside sources you know, China and, and the West and even South Korea keep funneling it money. Hold on. When you say imploded, what it, what do you mean practically? What does imploded Collapse, mean? Like a, like a political, because communism, you can't, you can't have a state run, you know, economy. It just doesn't work. It never works. Right. So um, by implode, you mean, you mean the government of North Korea, Kim Jong-un is no longer in charge and it just breaks yeah, up into yeah. little fiefdoms and little areas of just chaos or, or maybe just decentralization. I mean, the, there's a thin line between the two. Yeah. But the you know the there are powers that be that want you know that regime to continue as it is or or they're or they're worried about destabil you know there could be a legitimate reason where they're worried about destabilization and like loose nukes and all that kind of stuff so they say well better to have this regime in place so when the people start having like hunger um, hunger events you know China sends in a bunch of rice and South Korea sends in a bunch of uh, you know wheat or whatever and they mm -hmm. keep keep the system going the trouble at least from my view. What I'm thinking is that, you know, when the dollar goes, like there's no, I mean, the backup, like you say, is gold and silver. So it's not like there's nothing to keep it going. Like the dollar would be the one that's keeping everything else going. So in Argentina, if you go to Argentina, you know, they've had 20 years of this, like, you know, hyperinflation, then a revalue, then a lingering inflation, then a hyperinflation, then a revalue, then a lingering, you know, they keep doing the same process. It's because they keep pegging back to the dollar, like they keep and then printing over it as well. But if the dollar's gone, I don't think they can do that. Um, mm -hmm. That's just a, just just speculation. But I do agree. If you look at the if you look at the chart, it's like this fractal. Like no matter where you zoom in, it's always like doing this. Uh, uh, yeah, you could look at any length of it; and it looks like the same curve. So the yeah. question is, when does it stop? <laughs> yeah, or does it? Yeah, I mean, it, it, we could we could be in for a twenty year uh, lingering uh, hype or very high inflation stuff. I don't know. Well, I mean, what what tells you that that's not happening? I mean, you're leaning towards that not being the case. So, like, why? So am I. I mean, I'm not more yeah. than leaning to it. I just I don't see it, but I, I can't explain why I, why I think it's so impossible. I like I said, the the things that keep the other systems going. Oh, is right. The, okay. Is the is the is the dollar underneath, or it's like outside aid coming in? But there is no outside aid for us. Like it's not, you know, right. if, if if America's dollar goes, it's not like China is going to step up and start pegging everything with yuan. I mean, that's the, the one thing. Right, work. right. Okay, so you're saying something like, then if it that doesn't quite answer the question because yeah, because you know other other countries they can continually be propped up, whether we're talking about Argentina being propped up by the IMF, it's usually the IMF that comes in and, and, you yeah. know, descends on the prey and like vultures, they just come in, like suck the blood. And, uh, and then everyone's like, Oh, thank God. Somebody's sucking my blood. It's great. Uh, and, uh, and then it's just like, they just continue in poverty for decades. 
But like, who supports the IMF? It's the U.S. So like, we we do know that when the U.S. fall, that answers the question of when the U.S. does fall, when the dollar does fall, all the other ones are going to fall too. Like uh, North Korea and uh, Argentina, complete collapse, meaning there's going to be no more power structures, or at least existing power structures. And then, then what? Then what rebuilds it? What rebuilds it is gold and silver coming back into the circulation, and then from there you can rebuild. But the question is, why isn't why doesn't America? Why is it not going to take twenty years? Is the question? Yeah, for the dollar to fall, right? And I can only point. I can I can point to just the the. Um, I mean, look, I, I can I can I can show charts. Like, what did, what did I write in um, in the End Game Investor like a few days ago? It's like uh, we're so we're seeing like the the yield curve. But like when I go into these things, the yield curve, like everybody's like, "What the hell is a yield curve?" I don't even know exactly what a yield curve. I know what it is, but like um, when I start saying that and I start going to that ether again, and then what does it mean for the real world? Basically, what I saw was that the yield curve is is heading up again, meaning the the spread between the short term rates and the yield and the long term rates is shrinking. It yep. was like negative one hundred and sixty or something basis points, and now it's negative one hundred and twelve. So every time that this negative yield curve starts to go up into positive territory, it seems to be unstoppable. Um, so that see, it's it, it's telling me that the long term bond market is headed much higher, higher rates. Uh, which is going to smush the yield curve, and uh, then there's going to be another financial crisis. And I, I don't know exactly how long we're going to take until the next financial crisis, but I'm pretty sure. And this, this I think you might be able to answer better. Is why is the next financial crisis the last one? The uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The um, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's the last one or not. But it, w- what I can see is it looks really big. I mean, you can see the debt burdens when you when you talk to people just on the street. You know, everyone's like a little strung out. They've got cars they can't afford. They've got um, you know, and now now that the the interest rates have risen, you got people saying, "Oh, I'm getting laid off." I, I know people that are like trying to get jobs as a UPS driver. Apparently, it's actually, actually very well paid. But um, you know, they're they were doing something a little more professional. Now they're trying to get a job as a UPS driver, an Amazon driver. Um, and you can see, you can sort of see the the tide pulling out. So that means something's happening now. You know, the the only thing that makes me think it's the end game is the just the, the magnitude of it. Like how how far indebted we are. Um, what are we, we're like one hundred and thirty percent of GDP. Something like that. Something like that, right? Now, my question, like Japan got to 200%. So does that mean we can get up to 200% GDP before things start falling apart? Or I think they're Japan- at 250 or something. Yeah, yeah. but is that, is that a special case? Because they were safe. Their their people were saving, whereas Americans are are not. Like their their debt is government debt. Is that correct? Um, You mean Japanese debt is government debt? Yeah, like that 200 uh, like the two hundred, yeah, the two hundred and forty percent. I'm I'm checking on um like I'm, on trading economics now. I think it's 240, 250 something. Yeah. And like, yeah, why isn't the U.S. Japan? I mean, I can't. I can never answer that question definitively. Yeah. It's just okay. So in Japan here, I'm looking at government debt to GDP. It is now at two hundred and sixty four percent as of twenty twenty two. Right, I can um let me let me share a screen on this so you can see it. But I, I bet okay. their personal debt's a lot low. Unfortunately, the Japanese people, because they're they're the other end of that, they're like holding all the debt, they're gonna be just as screwed. It's not like it's not like the government collapses, but the people are okay. The people mm-hmm. are the ones holding all the debt. So uh, and do you know how much of the bond market the J- the Bank of Japan actually owns now? No. I, I think it's most it's almost all of it. Almost all of it. I wouldn't. It would not surprise me at all. Yeah. So here's here's Japan's uh, debt to GDP, right? So it's been uh, it was at fifty percent in the early eighties, and now it's at two hundred and sixty three percent. And these these numbers are not they're not really a thing. It's like GDP isn't really a thing. It's just yeah. an aggregate of an aggregate of many many different aggregates. It's like it's 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 you know it's a Keynesian number, so it's like a very vague estimate of something. <laughs> Yeah, but, I mean, it's uh, the best. We, in, in some ways, we're using the enemy's tools, which which you know gives them the gives them the power. But it's it's you know mm-hmm. to say you know for for Austrians to say, well, we can't really measure any of this stuff. Then everyone's going to say, well, what good are you then? These guys say they can measure things. So that that's that's always the problem that that Austrians have. 
um, you know, it's to say, you know, there is, there, there is no spoon, but you know, people want a spoon. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, so another thing about Japan uh, that, that explains why, I mean, oh, so here's a, here's another chart. I mean, I'm, I'm going to try to kajigger this on the fly here. Let's uh, let's share screen. So if we um, if we the, look the at, I would say, if I may go back yeah. really theoretically, like we've gone into tulip mania. Like people are people spent what two million dollars on a picture of a sad monkey, mm -hmm. you know, during during the hype, and that that always precedes something something nasty, you know. So that 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 just empirically gives me thought that something really nasty is coming. Right. Um. Yeah, I mean the the NFTs, right? Uh, securitized, yeah. securitized farts, securitized whatever. I mean, people were actually buying this stuff. I mean, you you can't get further into the realm of monetary spirituality than that. Yeah, um, well, I mean, crypto is at least pretending to be money. It's like, oh yeah, we're a new kind of money. Like NFTs are like what were? <laughs> I don't know what they were. It was like it was a bizarre thing. Like even 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 crypto though, it's not it's not a thing. It's no, like, it's, it's not. A, it's a it's a it's a distribution method of data right yeah. but but it's like the way i say the way I, I try to explain it to people why crypto is worthless is like imagine that there's a whole system of piping underneath your building but there's nothing in it like so what good is the pipes like if it's not if it's not going to carry water or or you know or sewage like what's the point of them that you, you can have this whole network that transfers nothing so it's just a waste of time <laughs> to build the thing Right. When, when you think of the energy, the energy required to build that piping too, it really boggles the mind. Like how much, right. how much energy we wasted putting all that together. So anyway, this is um this is the Japanese yen. So I'm not gonna do uh two charts at the same time here, but you'll see like in 2020 we were at like 108 or what is it, 100 and 103. We're about 100 uh, yen to a dollar. So the yen is about a penny, and now we're about 150. So it's lost like 33 percent the end versus the dollar since uh 2020 since 2020 since 2021 the beginning of 2021 now if we look at at japan um at the 10-year bond yield right at the same time sorry the same time from about five years do, 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 we go to the five-year chart here and uh the five-year chart it shows right sorry i've been Let's do that again. Okay, so 2020, we had yields at 0 0.09, 0 0.1, right? And then as the interest rate has risen since then, uh, the yen has weakened, right? So that that exposes the lie. Now, it's not always a lie, but that that higher interest rates lead to lower consumer prices. And that's only true when higher interest rates choke off extra demand. It's right. not true when who owns those the, the bonds that back the currency is owned by the central bank itself. So the higher the interest rates are, the more the central bank loses money. And then, you know, the central bank losing money is also another, you know, sort of Kabbalistic mystical monetary idea that I can't quite put my finger on what the hell is going on. But what I, I do know that whenever the central bank loses money, the currency loses value. And I can't like, that's again, the distilled ether. I can't really like, how do you translate that to the ground level? I'm gonna have to think about that one. I don't. I can't. I, that would have to come up with that on the fly. That's a. That's an excellent <laughs> point, and I might even take that and make a video of it. Like, why? Uh -huh. What does that mean in the real world when a central bank is losing, you know, money, whatever? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, the closest I can, I can, I might be able to give you a boost. Like the closest I've come to explaining it on a more of a ground level is that the the dollar is the unit of liability of the central bank. Right. So then if you take this a step down and then you're going back to the 19th century and you take a, a gold coin and you and you go to a bank, and you're like, here's my coin. I'd, I'd like you to store it. Please give me some dollars in exchange. And they give you thirty five bucks. So the thirty five bucks are the bank's liability. Now, if you go to redeem your thirty five bucks and then they don't have your gold coin, it's re it's it's recognized in ret retroactively that thirty five dollars that you have are worthless. Right. So the so the same thing, like like when you have a dollar, what you really have is the stuff on the other side of the Fed's balance sheet. If it's worthless because it, rates are going up and the bonds aren't worth anything, then you actually have a lot less value because the bonds that are that dollar, mostly that dollar, there's some gold on it. 
yeah. just just uh, they don't they're not worth anything anymore. And then the question is like how because we're talking about the very top of a pyramid here, and then we're talking about buying consumer prices with it. So how do you translate the top of the pyramid to the bottom of it, and and going through all those layers in that maze and how how it translates into reality is the difficult uh, you yeah, know labyrinthine not- question. It's not a conscious decision. It's not like the people go to the bank and say, oh, this dollar is worth less now because it's no longer an accurate reflection of the gold underneath it. Like they, you know, yeah. people have no idea. And it's just, they, they you know, I, I see this stuff on Congress about them talking about spending. Um, and, you know, the, even the even the hawks are like, we have to stop the spending. They don't understand they, they can't. Like if they if they stop the spending, the government or the, uh, the, the dollar collapses into a deflation. So. You know that 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 is lost on them. But like, how does it translate into the real world? I'll have to get back to you on that. I'd have to think on that one. I apologize. This is uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that so what what would you what would you like to you got you have any chidushim? That's a, how do you say chidushim? Have any like uh, new ways of putting things together that uh, would clear people's minds? Well, what I was, the other topic I was thinking of was the, um, what not, because we can't give advice, as you know, it's illegal, uh, mm-hmm. what non advice we would have for somebody who's like stuck deep into the system. So let's say they've, uh, you know, during the boom, um, you know, they, they took out a ton of debt, they got a car they can't afford, they got a house they can't afford, um, you know, their, their job dried up quite, a, you know, their job was something that was based on a bunch of inflation. Let's say they were working in mortgages. And now, now no one's taking out any mortgages and they're, you know, they're really in a bind. What advice could we, what practical advice could we give to someone like that? And I was thinking uh, tactic, tactical defaults and then uh, storing, just storing some silver. But I, I don't know if you have uh, something up, you know, downsize the car, downsize mm-hmm. the house, um, bury some silver somewhere so that you can have some, um, uh, it, it, I wouldn't, my, my point is that the debt will go away in the hyperinflation. So you can't let that consume you, but you mm-hmm. have to, uh, you have to be smart, smarter than you were before <laughs> on how to deal with it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's no escaping it without pain. There's going, there's going to be pain, even for the people who prepare, mm-hmm. um, you know, what, what, what we're about to go through. I can't even, I, I'm not ready for it because I don't even know what it's going to be. Um, I mean, I guess I'll find like I, I, I just I feel too. I feel so like I feel I feel kind of pathetic, not 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 entirely, but like I don't know how to sew. <laughs> you know, there's so much stuff I don't know how to do. So I mean, I have I have chickens in my backyard. Great, I have chickens in my backyard. But like that, but if somebody's hungry, he can just like walk into my backyard and take them. You know, yeah. there's there's not much I could do about it. So I just have to I just have to hope. You know, I, I got this, I got this, uh, you know, speaking to another guy, um, we were talking about the dollars collapsing any minute and he's like, no, no, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a few years. And everybody admits that it's going to happen. There's no one who says, oh, it's not going to happen. Everything's stable. Nobody says anything stable. Like that's not even, it's not even a thing yeah. anymore. Right. Everybody admits like this is coming down. They just disagree on the timing, but he's like, well, so I said, well, if you thought it was going to happen in the next few months, what would you be doing? So he said, "I'd be get, I'd be stacking food. I'd be, I'd be keeping commodities, um, basic materials that I need for survival, and and like I wouldn't be stacking gold or silver because you can't eat gold. And I, that's such a, that, what that essentially is saying is like when the dollar falls, uh, money itself will be destroyed, and nobody will want to trade anything with anybody anymore because we're all just going to be barbaric uh, monkeys, right? Uh- but that's that's." that's going to happen in certain pockets, but you would hope that, that when everyone's destitute, you know, and then some, and then, and then you have basically decent people in your neighborhood and they find out that this one guy has real money and it's not going to be like people aren't going to recognize that gold and silver have value because in the lead up to this, everyone's going to see that the value of gold and silver is going up and up and up and up, and it's going to freak people out and people are going to buy more and more of it. And and like right before the ultimate explosion, there's going to be a lot more people who have at least some because they're panicking to buy some. Yeah. Right. So that that'll set people up to value it in the way that they used to, even though they have no idea what the hell it is now. So let me ask you this: If if let's say somebody writes, let's say I write to the in-game investor and I go, Rafi, I, I love your videos, I love your channel, I'm learning a lot, but um, I'm in, you know, I've got two hundred thousand dollars in debt and I don't have a job that can. Um, 
pay off that debt anytime soon. What do I do? Mm. Right. I've been asked that question a lot. Um, yeah. Like how can, how can I, I can't buy, like, I mean, you know, I prepared, but if I mm-hmm. couldn't, like, let's say I didn't, you know, live my life responsibly beforehand, I can't do your advice of, you know, spending 10,000, a hundred thousand dollars on silver and silver miners and gold miners and stuff. I got, I got family to feed and I got debts, obligations to pay. Well, then look, uh, if you can't buy any, then fine. I'm not going to tell you to do something you can't do, but what you can do is you can find someone who has, who has skills, who's a good, who's a good person, who has a community of good people around him that also have gold and silver and whatever skills you have, you've got to call these people up and you got to tell them, look, when this happens, I can do such and such. And I'll, you know, I'll come to you and I'll work for you and uh, protect me. <laughs> that's, what, <laughs> that's what I would say. Right. You want You want to know who to go to. Um, yeah. And in the meantime, I guess, you know, keep treading water as much as you can um, or, you know, go work for him now. I mean, I've said that to people like they're like uh, young people that have have no savings. And they want skills and they don't want to, you know, they don't want to work, you know, in customer service for a cell phone company or whatever. They don't want to be part of that system. So I say, do some f- farming tourism, like, you know, go go to a farm of a guy who needs like labor, you know, live in a barn, a nice barn, you know, with like, you know, a bed and, you know, with your wife and maybe you have a, a small kid or two, just live on the farm and like do some work and then you'll be paid in food. And you could do this for a few months and like, fine, you won't earn money, but like you'll ger- you'll earn skills, you'll exercise, you'll eat good food and just do that for a few months until the end game happens. If you, if you convince it's happening and, and it'll, it'll, it'll be good for your soul. So that's another thing you could do. What do you think about tactical, uh, tactical defaults? Like, you know, don't pay, don't make the car payments instead buy some silver and bury it and wait for the repo man. Yeah. That's... I, mean, I wouldn't give any advice on that, but I mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't don't do that. But if you're gonna do it, I would do it. Because <laughs> uh, they can't. Um, I mean, you yeah. Know. Oh, no, I've I've heard stories of that of people um, in the 2008 2009 era when they lost their houses, they couldn't pay their houses anymore, so they just stopped paying the mortgage, and then it took years for the bank to get them out. And that's uh, that's theft. Um, but it's theft from a bank that already stole from you. So yeah, I mean, it's hard to say who's stealing from who anymore because everyone's stealing from everybody. What's well, a yeah? That's you know the more the morality of this world is is very difficult because it's very it's it's impossible to live a moral a moral life. Like you, you know, if you have a good job, it means you're probably in the system in some way. You know, uh, milking mm-hmm. off of people, other people. You know, it's, it's yeah. But I but I I see that I see that in the inf- in the inflation the inf- when we say inflation. Everything is inf- everything is inflated. I was just I was just having a conversation with my wife about this, and she was like she was talking to a, to a friend of ours, or small children like us, and she was saying like um, she sends her daughter to these uh, therapies like hydrotherapy or I don't know what they call it in English, repuivi suk or occupational therapy or this therapy and that therapy. And she admits like, it's not therapy. We just call it therapy to get like government money to subsidize it. Otherwise it's just, you know, you know, going swimming or something. Yeah. Right. So, so <laughs> like, uh, like we stay away from this stuff and like, so, you know, this happened to my wife a few times in the pool. She's taking her kids swimming and she's, uh, and then somebody goes up and says, Oh, whoa, is that, are you doing like hydrotherapy? And she's like, no, I'm taking my daughter swimming. <laughs> like it, even even that that is it, what because everything that they do for their kids now it's like you have to do it through a government program so it becomes part of this thing and then the the quality of it goes down and then and then you get this like check mark on your your daughter's or your son's i don't know list that he did this therapy and therefore he's qualified to go here now i mean it's nothing nothing makes any damn sense and it's it's yeah. in every country <laughs> Well, that to tie back to your original uh, question, I mean, that's sort of that's the real world symbol of of things reaching their their climax. I mean, how much more, you know, how much more government controlling everything, inflating can can the world sustain before it collapses? Right. Especially, you know, the American the American quality of life is, you know, that we're accustomed to a certain quality of life. We want our avocado toast. So. The, yeah. We have to borrow more and more and more to keep that avocado toast going. And when the avocado toast stops, I think that's 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 the blow up. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I think that's I think that's the end. I don't know. Right. I, I would just I would just ask yourself this question. Yeah. Um, you know, so if 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 you're in debt, do you remember I remember in the 80s and 90s when I was growing up, and my my parents weren't in debt. I mean, they had a mortgage. 
Yeah. But they were growing their savings and they were paying their mortgage and, and they were increasing their net wealth. And it seemed to me that, you know, other people were also increasing their net wealth. There was every so often there was this like Shlemiel who would go into debt and like, you know, bankrupt himself. And then we'd have to help him in the community. And that happens all the time. But now it's like it's like everyone is on a treadmill in debt and nobody is increasing their assets on a, there. Some people are. But like the thing is, like the ones that are really increasing their assets are doing it based on inflation and they're going to lose it too. Like wh what, what do we have left? It's, it's, it's hard to even, even say, and like the quality of my, I thank God I have a house, but it's no, it's nothing compared to the house that I grew up in, uh, in the States. I mean, I'm in Israel, so it's smaller here and uh, more corrupt, but, uh, <laughs> it seems like everything is being hollowed out, even the walls. Yeah, no, I, I definitely feel that as well. Um, that's my, that's like I said, I, I let me ask you this. Let me let me rephrase this. Mm. Let's say it goes another 20 years. What what can what can you do during this lingering besides just continuing to stack? I mean, if if, if Clown World goes on for another 10 years, what do we do? I don't know, Phil. I don't know if I can handle it. I mean, I, 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 I'll, I'd, I'd find out I'd find out a way to handle it. But like Clown yeah. World, fine. I can, Clown World, fine. Like but when Clown World becomes scary, nightmarish Clown World, like that I can't really handle again. Because we we did scary, nightmarish Clown World. That's when the clowns get violent and they start hitting you. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's when I... That's I read. I read porno to the school board every uh, third. You know, I take the books from the library and I, you know, read select chapters, and they are they are disgusting. Um, How do you find all this porn? I wanted to ask you that. I wasn't sure if you wanted to talk about it. Oh, it's in the school libraries. You just go to the school libraries. You find you find out. I, I'm not allowed to go in the libraries, of course, because that's you know children only. <laughs> you find out what books are in there. You order them and then you read them. And then you know, I find gender queer and I go and read select passages from gender queer to the school board. I know I'm not changing their mind. They're getting paid. Like the reason they're doing this is because inflation is paying them to do it. You know, mm -hmm. there's some there's some sort of thing where the the you know I, I think it's the Democrat Party. I'm not. I will, could be the Republicans too, for all I know. The yeah. Democrat Party is like you know the paying the teachers unions to you know sponsor these LGBT groups that are writing these bizarre books. And somewhere along the line, there's this freak who really wants children to read this stuff. But, you know, the the, the money is supporting this, this complete pervert. Um, mm -hmm. But I know I'm not going to change. It's not like me reading this is going to change any of their minds. They know the book's there. They know what the book is. Um, but I'm just doing it to amuse myself during Clown World. That's, that's literally the only reason I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So one of the ways to, to stay sane is to uh, read porn to... Um... School boards. boards. I mean, look, you you you, you got to find your way to get through this. Um, now, could I do it another ten years? I don't know. <laughs> God. Uh, I'm 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 working on you know young kippers tonight. I'm working on on forgiveness. I'm trying to figure out how to forgive these people that uh, That's that tough. first of all that 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 stripped my wife of her job, which I'm not. We're not so sad about because she hated that job anyway, and um, whatever, and and. And stripped us of uh, our societal rights to, you know, and, and our kids. Uh, you know, there was a, it was, it was the, the time of my daughter's bat mitzvah when she's 12 and all her friends were getting bat mitzvah. And, you know, you can only go to the bat mitzvah if you have a green pass and people are actually doing this. And I'm like, it's just make whatever. And um, it's just, it's, it's horrible. So I'm working on, on forgiving people because I can't hold on to this, yeah, this pain. No. I can't. And and there was a story that was shared in my synagogue um, on Shabbat where I don't know if this has just happened uh, or it was a few months ago. It was recently where, where Mitsubishi actually apologized to descendants of the American POWs that they enslaved in their factories. Um, and there was this whole thing where the, the CEO of... Um, of Mitsubishi, you know, sat had, was on a stage with the descendants of these POWs, and they they hugged and they cried and they shared dinner and and you know, okay, you know that you can you can get you can get forgiveness uh, at least in the future, even if it doesn't happen now. So like every all the insanity that's happening now, it's going to be reversed. It's going to be reversed, and the cent all the centralization is going to lead to decentralization. You know what? If you want, if you want to bring this down to earth. How does uh, we we I, I wrote this question to you? How does uh, decent? How does centralization into these huge bear mouths like Amazon and Tesla, and and uh, even the you know the IMF or whatever the centralization is? How does that become 
back into mom and pop shop? How do we see those? What happens? If you look at if you look at Walmart, right? So Walmart contacts um, Monsanto and is like, I need a hundred million billion tomatoes, right? And I'll pay you, you know, some fraction of a penny per tomato. All that is done on this on the credit, right? There's no the the gold isn't loaded onto a train and shipped over to Monsanto. And the only way that amount of credit can be generated is through 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 inflation. So when the when the when the train when the train stops, they just can't. It's not physically possible to order a hundred million tomatoes on spec to be delivered in two years. Like it's, just, it's, it's not possible to generate that. In two that years, size. you mean they order it two years in advance? Something like, yeah, they might, I mean, they might, they might say mm-hmm. two years lot, or they might have rolling contracts. Um, mm-hmm. And what happened, you know, months and, you know, there's several different companies that, that compete for that contract and they fight over like an eighth of, or a 10th of a penny per tomato or something. I mean, they, the, the fight goes down several several notches i mean it's it's an infinitesimally small amount of money that they'll fight over for tomato and mm-hmm. so these three or four different mega farms are competing over that tomato and so when they get that price down what do they have to do they got to harvest the tomatoes when they're green and they're hard it's like a is harder than an apple right, right. <laughs> they can they can fall off the back of a truck and you can just pick them back up and put them back in you know and so when by the time that by the time the tomato gets to the store it's disgusting right it's you know it, it right it didn't you know they picked it three months too early it was solid green and hard as a brick it ripened in an air-conditioned store not out in the sunshine and you know you get this flavorless bush of a tomato right. um that's inflated well, food because yeah, of the inflated that, money yeah, yeah 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 that that'll that goes away because that that system requires like just an enormous amount of of spec i mean it's mm-hmm. it, you know it, it's just huge <laughs> right and a lot of margin a lot of margin a lot of margin yeah a lot of margin too so it just it, okay. it, the system uh, you know, if there's not that much credit, the system doesn't support it. Okay. Just- so that, that, that leads me. Okay. I think we can dig a little deeper on this. I have about like maybe seven minutes. Then I got to okay. go and, and have my, uh, my suit on my second, which is the meal before the fast. Um, so. That doesn't sound so, like you're fasting. It sounds like you're having a meal. No, you have a meal and then you start the fast after the meal. How long do you fast for? 25 hours. Okay. That's a fast. All right. I thought you were yeah. fasting for four hours. <laughs> no, no, the whole day, whole day. <laughs> whole day so ahead, so okay so on t- in march 2020 right we saw this crazy stuff happening in the futures market especially in gold and silver but i think it was in all futures markets right before the crisis um let's say in like february january february 2020 as if it was planned i don't know exactly if it was planned i'm not saying it was but it it looks like it kind of may- might have been right that the the open interest in the gold futures contract was like at all time records right uh, i'm i'm going to try to i'm going to try to find that and uh so i can share screen you saying that that's people were people were like jumping into gold it, on the futures market it, on the it's futures market. yeah so pay, they were jumping to paper gold okay. yeah they were jumping on paper gold and the 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 um the open interest just went to like i think 800,000 contracts which it never ever was and then like during the lockdowns the then open interest just like collapsed uh, along with the price and then it, it 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 has it's never recovered since then right so what you're describing uh, of you know fighting over a fraction of a penny for a tomato it seems that that was happening in the gold market also um and then in Mar- here here it is i'm going to share this screen here i would expect uh, something like that to possibly happen again like right right as the end game is occurring like okay before people so move. so here's here's gold open interest right going back let's let's go even farther right let's go long term this is gold charts are us uh, this is a subscription service okay so we see like the, this is what you're talking about like um you know more and more contracts for tomatoes like we may as well be talking about tomatoes gold it's all the same thing right it's not the same thing it's a similar thing and yeah. then you see here this spike over here like where i'm circling right yeah. that's that's right around 2020 when it goes into that, this humongous right. spike right here. what the hell is that and then it's just that like the unknown virus of, or a mysterious yeah, virus yeah that's the okay. if we go back to it something sorry. yeah there was some sort of economic thing the repocalypse was right around that time so my yeah. my my guess is that people were piling into paper silver and then that was going to be followed by a rush into physical when people you know when the system realized there wasn't enough paper to cover it so that's the, the, the repocalypse is around here right you see and then we go to all-time highs, and then there's like a 
a sell off in a, and then the huge this is the the March 2020 crazy you know crash and then open interest went down here and it really hasn't recovered since so is this already this is already the deflationary forces coming or do you see one more spike in the open interest just like an open interest in tomatoes i mean these how, how do we yeah, put all these pieces together i could definitely see another spike happening um the 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 system must the debt must grow at an exponential rate or the system collapses and the 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 mysterious virus of unknown origin conveniently allowed uh the debt to grow exponentially you know because mm. people were not going to take on that kind of debt unless they were fired from their jobs and forced to stay home and you know locked away and their all the restaurants went out of business all that stuff is what pe- you know made people take an enormous amount of loans right i'm uh, i'm not i'm not in the camp I'm not in the camp where this whole thing was planned because of uh, because some genius Keynesians got together and said, look, we have to figure out a way to increase the debt or everything's going to come down. Oh, how about this plan from this place in China or whatever? I, I don't I, I never thought in that direction. Well, I, I don't know. I don't I don't I don't like I, this was another topic I was going to maybe bring up. We don't have time for it, but I, I don't okay. the system doesn't require a cabal of evil geniuses to be managing it. It just. Oh, good. Yeah. OK. Things things start to happen, and then people say, "Oh, let, let, well, this this is helping me personally right now. Let's continue this thing." So, um, right, you know, it's, it's like the invisible hand from hell. Yeah, <laughs> the evil invisible hand. Exactly right. So, you right. know, the, the the you know the this mysterious virus of unknown origin started, and then you know the the government said um, or the Fed said we need to borrow a bunch of money, so they you know or print a bunch of print a bunch of dollars, right? The government needed to borrow a bunch of money. And then this, you know, draconian system start, you know, and government bureaucrats love control. So CDC said, oh, well, let's shut everyone down because we love to do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, all you know, all these mechanisms just started self-feeding themselves. Um, and then, you know, of course, the, um, you know, Pfizer started, Pfizer saw the cash cow coming in. So they started pumping up the mania on TV. Okay. I mean, kind of- so how, how about, how about this angle? Um Why can't it, I'm going to, tr- I'm going to try to end here and then give you the last uh, wrap up. Okay. Um, so why isn't going to last? Why isn't it going to last another twenty years? Well, in not speaking in terms of the monetary sphere, just speaking in terms of like say, like censorship and whatever else is happening, um, it's getting very obvious to a lot of people who are not in our camp. Um, it's getting very obvious that they're desperately trying to stop all sources of information that aren't their official sources of information, but they have this problem of like there still is a core of Western values left and we're still able to hang on with our fingernails to something to fight to, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, this whole thing with uh, Russell Brand is the, I guess he's the the flagship of it now. Um, It just, uh, it 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 seems, yeah, he's tough. It's, it seems, it seems that too many people are calling BS on the system and it's just going to snowball from here. And if they try something else like carbon credit, system or whatever they're not gonna there's not gonna be enough gullibility because back in the in 2020 right i i i've been for many many years extremely skeptical of anything the government says and but they told me lockdown for two weeks they told me two weeks flat in the curve i'm like okay i'll give you two weeks and they were able to fool me they were able to fool me for two weeks i can't believe they did that because very few people are more suspicious of the government than I am. And I trusted them for two weeks because, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if everyone was going to die of this thing. I didn't know, but I said two weeks, that's it. But this time I don't see, they can't freak people out about climate change because they've been doing that for years and it, okay, now what? But so how, how, but 20 years that people already have lost faith. It's already the, that's it. Like, yeah, I mean, there they, are, they spent it all in 2020. They don't it's it's like you keep saying it's unfocused, like people are chasing after Trump and RFK rather than the monetary system, but RFK Jr. And they're not yeah. these are not necessarily bad avatars. I don't I don't like Trump's economic advisors. Um, mm-hmm. I can get into that in another episode. But um, <clears throat> they're like you said, they're the un, it's the unfocused rage against the system that is oppressing them. And maybe it'll achieve, you know, maybe we'll get a Javier Millet and it'll, you know, it'll achieve its focus. <laughs> Um, yeah. but you know, the, 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 fact that people are already, I mean, even lefties, you know, the, the more, you know, the more Bill Maher style lefties are already saying like, okay, we've, we've had enough of this. We don't, we want our, we want to go back to avocado toast and brunch 
Uh, we don't want any more insane lockdowns. It's, now they're not going to get their avocado toast and brunch, but you know they they're they're done with like the the fear mongering. I think we'll see. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows what they'll try and if it'll work or not. But I, I do agree. I think I think that it's it's going to get to the point where the government's going to say, okay, jack boots. You know, it's jack boot time, and then it's either going to happen or it's not going to happen. So. That's what I think it's going to get to. And hopefully they need, it's not. They need, they need a lot of money for jackboot time. Like the, the Nazis, the, the Nazis <clears throat> to have jackboot time, you know, which my family went through, um, they, needed, they needed a lot of gold to do that. Um, but now like they've already spent it all. It's like the, the, the Nazis just went on a, on a conquering spree to like take everything that they were able to conquer and then just like spend it on World War II. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully, also, I mean, the the American yeomanry is like heavily, heavily armed. So I don't, I don't see jackboot time going very well here. I mean, there's already there's there's enough people that are like it's not so, down with it. It sounds like it sounds like worse than the porn you read to the school board. Like, yeah. oh, it's jackboot time with <laughs> children, and uh, what do you have to do during jackboot time? You have to duck and cover, and you know, obey the government. Yeah, there's, there's right. enough of the founding. There's enough of the founding left that I, I don't I don't see that happening. I mean, you know, Germany was going through Weimar and like, you know, I mean, they'd already gone through World War One and Weimar and, you know, a lot of a lot yeah, of but before before that they had what was his name? Uh, Bismarck. Right. Yeah. And they, they were a monarchy. It's not like they had a tradition of Western uh, sort of, but like they had, they had some Christian values. But, uh, you know, it wasn't enough to stop to stop uh their insanity and yeah. um <laughs> hopefully well, hopefully america has some a good core left to stop the final uh whatever hey i'm here on. talking to you so we must be doing something right <laughs> yeah hey were you, were you born in israel or were you born in no america? no i was born in miami i moved here in 2007 got okay. married in 2008 in july 2008 i got married we got like all this money from gifts and put it in the stock market and then bam <laughs> You know, it's, I'll tell you a quick story and then we'll wind down. Yeah. So I I, met, I married my wife in 2000, I want to say 2007, 2008, somewhere around then. I said, babe, I can do much you better. You don't remember your anniversary? Huh? You don't remember your anniversary? I remember it's uh, October 1st, but I don't remember the- uh, 2007 exactly. or 2008. Oh, so we got, we got married around the same time. You're going to get in trouble. But- uh, <laughs> So babe, you know, because we were living in South Korea at the time and, and my 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 uh, job is for, the, the options are limited for foreigners. Like I would have to either mm-hmm. get married and like become f- absolutely fluent in Korean to get a real job or I'd have to stay being a teacher. I was teaching uh, economics at a high school. It was nice, but, you know, it was limited. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I said, babe, let's go to America. Uh, you know, I the, the options are wide open for me there. It's the land of the free. We landed in 2008 and like everything was crazy. <laughs> Like the, the, the city's <laughs> were burning down and we lived with my parents for a year. I couldn't get a job as a, as doing anything. I couldn't even get a job like sweeping floors. It was, she's like, what kind of country did you take me to? <laughs> oh, your wife is South Korean. Yes. Yes. My wife oh, South wow. Korean. My, my, the guy I learned Talmud with is South Korean. Oh, he's, a, con- he's a convert. Oh, there you go. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. no, but it's, it's, it's really, it's really strange. Like the, the like our, our, our lives mirror each other's in some it's kind of like fun house way. It, it's, it's really strange. It's, I, <laughs> I see this in like almost everything you tell me, but like, okay, fine. <laughs> All right, let's wind things down. I got to get to King's Dominion. All uh, right. Okay. So yeah, I gotta, I gotta start my, uh, my meal here and um, hopefully next week we can do a live stream. We'll figure it out. I'll get Mario's help and uh, I'll try to put this up before young Kipper uh, and uh, apologies to everyone. I'm sorry. We can get the live stream up, but uh, next week, hopefully.